Hello guys, how are you? So today I'm going to talk about some of the myths about uh, quantitative finance or financial engineering. Uh, there are quite quite a few actually I came across uh, on internet. If you go through Quora or Reddit, you will come across many of them. And I would like to clarify based on my own opinion. Again, uh, someone else's opinion could be different. But uh, based on my own experience, uh, I can... Uh, I can clarify some of some of the myths. Uh, well, the first one is uh, quant uh, quantitative finance is very uh, very lucrative. So much so that you know you can retire uh, at the age of forty. You will make millions, and you can retire at the age of forty. Well, it's true in some companies. Yes, if you're working for uh, Renisa Technology, for example, uh, you could be making millions uh, every year. If you're working with some of the uh, highly profitable quantitative trading firm like Citadel and all, probably it is true. Uh, but uh, in most cases, it is not like the case. It's definitely lucrative. No question about that. We'll make uh, quite good money. But uh, it's not that lucrative that uh, you will be retiring at the age of 40. Um, right. So that's not the case. Another myth is it's a rocket science. You have to have a PhD in astrophysics in order to work in uh, quantitative finance. It's so super difficult that uh, someone without having published paper uh, in, in top journals will not be able to understand, you know, the techniques in quantitative finance. That's actually not true. Uh, and let me tell you that most of the algorithms used in quantitative finance can well be understood by someone who has studied um, a mathematics bachelor's. Right. A lot of the, in fact, most of the algorithms are not that difficult, especially if you have studied uh, a BSc or, or, or a BTEC in uh, physics, maths or engineering. If you have good understanding of mathematics, uh, I think that's that's uh, at an undergraduate level, that gets good enough. You do not need to have a master's or PhD. It does help. Nothing wrong with that. But uh, the algorithms are not uh, super duper difficult, let me tell you. One uh, famous algorithm used in quantitative finance is black skull uh, algorithm, right? And um, I was doing a part of my economics program and I came across the algorithm that uses, uh, um, you know, Brownian motion and things like that, uh, things borrowed from physics. But the mathematics used there is much, much, much easier compared to, you know, mathematics used in uh, classical mechanics or quantum mechanics in physics. And that too at an undergrad level, at a postgrad or PhD level, it will be even more, more, uh, yeah, different then. So it's it's difficult, definitely, for a not mathematical someone with non mathematical background. But it's not um, difficult uh, if you already have some mathematical background in in your bachelor degree, right? And there are varieties of role. Like some roles are heavily mathematical. Others are less mathematical also, right? So all data science, sorry, all quantitative finance roles are not highly, highly mathematical. Some are, but uh, others are somewhat less mathematical. Okay. And then another myth is quantitative finance is about quantitative trading and algorithm trading. This is a very common myth, actually. You know, when people talk about quantitative finance, they automatically assume that you are talking about quantitative trading, algorithm trading. You are uh, coming up with uh, trading strategies, you know, you're writing code, uh, you're developing uh, uh, algorithms uh, to generate alpha to make money out of trading. That's not the case, actually. In fact, trading is very, very small compared to the other aspects of business for most banks. Right? Banks are mostly in, uh, uh, involved in, in lending activities and less uh, in trading activities. And this is true for most of the uh, big banks in the world. So it's not about all about trading. It's definitely quite big in trading nowadays uh, with computers uh, being so powerful nowadays. Trading is, is now very automated in many companies, many organizations, and certainly quantitative finance is heavily used there. But it's not that uh, quantitative finance is all about quantitative trading. Right. There are other areas in which quantity finance is also used. For example, in lending, quantity finance is quite heavily used. In insurance pricing activities, there also quantity finance is quite heavily used. Okay. Then one other myth is about uh, about use of programming languages and use of programming. 
Now this is the myth, uh, especially in India, because a lot of the quants who work in India, they actually implement the algorithm. So they develop softwares for that. Uh, so there is this common myth that you need to be a software developer. You need to be really good with programming, right? Uh, programming does help if you really good at programming. Uh, that really is helpful, uh, but it's not sufficient. You are not an IT person if you're working as a quant. Right? You are more of a mathematician and less of a software engineer, just to clarify that. Okay, So programming is definitely useful, but it's not the most important skill in quantitative finance. Another myth, a related myth is that in quantitative finance, you need to be already an expert in finance. You need to have certifications like FRM and CFA. That's not true. In quantitative finance, your skills in uh, mathematics and programming will be valued more than your knowledge of uh, finance and economics right so that's uh, that's very important to know especially if you're coming from non-finance background should not be demotivated by that if you're coming from engineering or science technology background do not worry about uh, your lack of experience or knowledge of finance or economics another myth is you need a phd that used to be true actually couple of decades back in 1980s and 1990s even most of the quants used to have PhD and they would hire only PhD even today in some firms some uh, trading firms for example in Renisa technology in the US they hire only PhDs from scientific background mathematics uh, physics and computer science engineering but that's not true in most other firms, uh, especially the banks and insurance companies. You do not need a PhD and most people you will work with uh, will not have PhD in quantity finance. So that's not true. And another myth is jobs, uh, quant finance jobs are available only in financial centers like London and New York and Hong Kong. It is true to some extent that uh, most interesting fi quantitative finance jobs are available in London and New York and in Hong Kong and Singapore and you know these financial centers there's no question about that but let me also tell you that uh, there are plenty of quantitative finance jobs in uh, offshore locations such as in India in cities like Bangalore and Mumbai and Pune and Chennai or Delhi you, you have many opportunities there. Also in Europe, for example, in Amsterdam, in Frankfurt, right, uh, in, in Warsaw, in Poland, in Dubai, right. These are less known places, places for quantity finance roles, but there are plenty of opportunities in these cities as well. One important thing to mention is that if you have experience in a non-financial center, let's say you are working as a quant finance expert in some cities in uh, Africa or in Latin America or in, in Bangalore in India or in, in some cities in in Pakistan, Bangladesh, you name it. With experience after working for a few years, you can move to the financial centers like London or, or, or New York, Hong Kong. Well, going to US is a bit difficult, but certainly you can go to London or Amsterdam or Frankfurt or Hong Kong, right? Or Singapore. Many companies are sponsoring or ready to sponsor your visa. Uh, and that was for fresher it's very difficult but after having a few years of experience you can move to those places if you have quantitative trading experience in some Indian trading firms in India for a couple of years you'll be hired by top quantity firms in in the Europe right uh, but of course after having a couple of years of experience after you are uh, uh, yeah, a bit more seasoned right so that's uh, very important to, to know that jobs are available everywhere. Some jobs are available only in financial centers like London and New York, but it's not true that only, uh, all jobs are available only in these places and nowhere else. That's not true. Another myth is that uh, you need a master's in quantity finance or financial engineering in order to work in quantity finance. That's actually not true. In fact, most people working in quantity finance have uh, no financial or quantity finance degree. In fact, they barely knew about uh, quantity finance or finance economics uh, before working in finance, before working the first job in quantity finance. Uh, most people come from non-finance background like physics, maths, uh, chemistry, uh, engineering, uh, scientific engineering background. 
ऑल्सो इकोनॉमिक्स बैकग्राउंड लेट मी टेल यू या अनदर इम्पॉर्टेंट मिथ एंड इट्स समथिंग न्यू एक्चुअली आई डी नो दैट बट आई आई गॉट टू नो दैट फॉर सम वन दैट ए लॉट ऑफ पीपल थिंक दैट क्वान्टिटेटिव फाइनेंस इज वेरी सिमिलर टू अदर डेटा साइंस रोल्स इन अदर इंडस्ट्री दैट्स नॉट ट्रू एक्चुअली क्वान्टिटेटिव फाइनेंस इज क्वाइट डिफरेंट एक्चुअली फ्रॉम यू नो ए जेनेरिक डेटा साइंस रोल राइट इफ यू टेक अ डेटा साइंस कोर्स यू कंप्लीट दैट कोर्स Yes, it's going to help you finding a job in uh, in quantitative finance to get your first job in quantitative finance, but does not mean that you will be productive in your first job from day one because you have done a uh, data science course. Simply because a lot of the generic data science uh, courses are not tailored made for quantitative finance problems, right? You will learn some algorithms, you will learn some yeah mathematical programming, but uh the models the algorithms developed within banks and insurance companies and trading firms are very proprietary very private very secret in nature so you will not be learning most of them in in your data science courses quite likely right but in terms of role also quite different data science role is very either is very engineering driven or is more of a marketing type if you're working in e-commerce you are working in consumer research is more of a marketing sales research type job in other places where you're working uh, on more of a put ai development is more software development with a bit of a data science right ai whereas quantity finance is quite different in that way quantity finance is very mathematical very academic in nature you will have to write everything about your algorithms in a very well documented manner something that you do not do in data science other data science roles you do some documentation but the documents the standard is not as good as that in quantitative finance so that's something uh, to know so quantitative finance in some way is bit academic if you are somebody who uh, you do not like reading books reading research papers or knowing about things you are not bit academic i think you will not enjoy quantitative finance let me tell you uh if a somebody who is more of a hacker who wants to build a bit of a software uh well then you should not come to quantitative finance in my i my view quantitative trading may be a bit of a career for you but in quantitative finance you need to think you need to be a good thinker you need to be someone who loves reading loves investigating right so those things are super important okay okay these are the myths i want to discuss anything else you want to ask me please let me know in the comment section you can always write to me i will i'll be happy to respond to you thanks guys